This is Washington Watch. I'm Tony Perkins. The website, TonyPerkins.com. Make sure you check it out. Lots of resources there for you. If you miss any of today's program or if you missed any programs over the last week or so, you can go back and uh, they're all archived at TonyPerkins.com. All right, as we mentioned, uh, President Biden, um, I don't know, I hope he has some, uh, well, I don't know, hope he has. He's going to need refills, ink refills for his pen. Uh, he is signing so many of these executive orders. Well, yesterday, uh, President Joe Biden signed an order that would allow transgenderism to infiltrate our nation's military. Uh, here's a clip of what he had to say about it yesterday. And what I'm doing is enabling all qualified Americans to serve their country in uniform and uh, essentially uh, uh, you know, re 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 restoring the situations that existed before with transgender personnel, if qualified in every other way, can serve their government in the United States military. In other words, he is turning our nation's military into a petri dish in his laboratory of radical social experimentation. Joining me now to uh, talk about this, someone who understands what is at stake for the men and women who actually serve in uniform in our nation's military, as well as for our nation's security. Congressman Warren Davidson, he's a former U.S. Army Ranger. He serves as the 8th Congressional uh, District Representative of Ohio, and he is a member of the Army Caucus. Uh, Congressman Warren Davidson, welcome back to the program. Always great to talk to you, Tony. How are you? I'm doing quite well, thank you. Uh, you tweeted out, uh, the military is not the venue for progressives to battle over gender politics. Um, Bad move on Joe Biden's part? Yeah, absolutely. And look, it's not what I feel bad for people suffering from gender dysphoria, whether it's them personally or members of their family. It's a very, uh, very hard thing for people to deal with. Uh, and it's, it's incredibly, uh, you know, disruptive for someone's life to deal with. And I just don't think active duty military is the right place to do it. Uh, people need to be focused on that. And frankly, taxpayers don't need to fund uh, that process either. And I think, look, the military exists to be laser focused on fighting and winning our nation's wars. And, uh, and so this is, a, this is a path to put a progressive priority in first place. I mean, look at, look at his agenda on transgenderism, not just here, but with respect to women's and girls sports uh, on Title IX, which is meant to advance and protect women's and girls sport. So it's a complete disruption. People say, is this really the big priority that you're working on, David Tennant? No, this is President Biden's priority. This is his agenda. This is what he said out of tw his first 20 executive orders, which is a pretty brisk pace. Two of them uh, deal with this topic. So I, I think it's the wrong focus for our military. It's certainly the wrong thing for women and girls in sports and definitely the wrong venue to try to force the debate. You know, what I find interesting, Congressman, is that, you know, the Democrats, they're always talking about how they're the the party of science and, and evidence and the, the reality is the president, in making this announcement yesterday, stepped over an actual 2018 DOD report that was based upon actual data from those that have transgenderism that are serving in the military and made reference to a 2016 RAND study that uh, was speculative, had, based on no evidence. The, the 2018 report, which Donald Trump asked for, uh, it was given to him by the DOD, suggested that this was not a good policy for the military. Where's the evidence-based decisions that uh, the president and his party said they're going to make? Yeah, I mean, it's, they're pretty selective on which science they trust. Uh, we saw that with another priority this week uh, on, on abortion. You know, the science there, it's clearly a separate living human being. Uh, they're just discarding that science and focusing on, on uh, I guess, what they, they might say alternative facts, right? So the, the fact is that it's a, it's a separate human being uh, with respect to life. And, you know, the facts are that the research showed this same thing I'm talking about. In terms of readiness, the amount of um, uh, physical and mental health that needs to take place for someone on active duty uh, is, is enduring. Uh, it, it leads to a lot of other readiness issues. And when you think about the rate of suicide of, of um, not just uh, veterans, but active duty service members, uh, and, and you overlay that with people dealing with gender dysphoria, it's really troubling. So I think you should really focus on getting these people the care they need 
Mm-hmm. They should get it uh, outside of the DOD active duty situation. And uh, and ideally, it should be something that you take into account uh, for readiness. I mean, you take people for, for um, enlisting in the military or signing up to be part of the officer corps. I mean, there are all sorts of uh, things that people have to go through to qualify to serve. And, and look, why? Because you want them to be healthy and combat ready, not dealing with these other issues. And the percentage of folks that are dealing with readiness issues while they're dealing with gender dysphoria is off the charts. That's the cliff notes of the 2018 study. And that's just, uh, you know, the, the reality of their selective use of science here. You mentioned also how this agenda is being pushed in our public schools. Are, are, are you concerned about the, the long-term effects of the exposure of young people? I mean, we're talking down into elementary school being exposed to, to this. I mean, what are the long-term consequences of this? Yeah, I mean, historically, it's a tiny fraction of the population that deals with gender dysphoria and associated, uh, you know, uh, mental health uh, issues and and some physiological challenges, you know, in rare chromosome disorders. This is a really small percentage of the population, but suddenly uh, it, it's a, a growing yeah. phenomenon, and certainly the, the awareness is growing. And so there's a Brown PhD, Brown professor, she did some research and she was just curious, well, what's going on? She, you know, not a Christian, not a conservative. She's a professor, it was a professor at Brown. And she, she just highlighted the fact that, isn't it interesting that in a peer group, once somebody identifies as transgender, then there are multiple people often in that peer group. And she labeled the term sudden onset gender dysphoria. She lost her job. She lost any publication rights in medical journals, uh, no longer booked at conferences. And similar people doing that research are, are similarly being silenced by academia. Yeah, that's that evidence they don't want to hear about, uh, the science that they right. want to ignore. Uh, Congressman Davidson, thanks so much for taking time out to join us today. As always, great to talk with you. Likewise. Thanks, Tony. All right.